Okay, we're trying to get. There we go. Now I can hear you. I don't know why <laughs> this thing does this. It's like stuck. I don't know. Instagram is suffering right now. They want to block our joy, but we will not allow it. Not at all. We're not doing that. <laughs> well, first of all, welcome to Five Songs That Changed My Life. Thank you Thank so much you. for joining me. Yeah, it's super cool. It's super fun. I love the idea. And when I thought about the songs, they came right to me. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. And you picked some great songs, may I say. Some great ones. Yeah, funny. Everyone on here, a funny fact. Like, I tried to do one of those songs at Taco Tuesday. And even Stevie. Stevie was just like, oh, my God, I love that song. No one's ever requested that song. It's like one of my favorite songs. So. Oh, yeah. cool. Very yeah. nice. Yeah, you, you definitely picked some powerhouse vocalist kind of joints we, which is fitting because that is who you are yes ma'am hey, hey yes how yes yes hey, guys. how you doing hey rich hey there's people in here from houston i haven't seen hey richard kiss your heart i for love me. it hey drew. sound representing hey y'all drew shade i see you oh i love drew vincent oh my god i love vincent drew you guys richard tan fam hey guys thank y'all so much for joining okay this is gonna be fun but we're gonna it's going to be a it. whole lot of fun. Absolutely. Do it. Does it mean I yes. have to sing like a snippet of these songs? Is that what I have to do too? Well, I'm going to play a little snippet, but you are welcome to sing. It's your world. I live in it. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. Here we go. Let's do it. So before we start with the song list, I want to make sure that the people know who this wonderful, talented woman here is. So Ms. Ashley Tamar is a powerhouse contemporary vocalist, a widely known as a muse and protege of the one and only Prince and co-writer of the Grammy-nominated Grammy duet, Beautiful, Loved, and Blessed. He's also an alumna of University of Southern California's Thornton School of Music, year representing. He's appeared on Broadway and in various productions by Tyler Perry. I know I had a bunch of people be like, I love that part in Tyler Perry where she sang that song and that girl killed it. Okay, y'all, here she is. So come on in the room and enjoy this conversation, okay? She was also on The Voice Season 10 on Team... Christina, yes, <laughs> representing. Hey, we love it. We love it. One powerhouse recognizes another. Yes, indeed. She recently released her fourth independent album, My Name is Ashley, via her Siren Music Group company. She's a CEO, a boss, and a singer. Yes, God. And she's also an author of the edutainment book and workbook for aspiring artists, 100 Things to Know About, excuse me, Know as an Independent Music Artist. I want to make sure I got that right. <laughs> So uh, yeah. where do you have time? Do you have you to do all these things? You do all the things, ma'am. How do you find the time? <laughs> I mean, it's balanced. I haven't mastered it. I'm not about to say, like, I get up first thing in the morning and, you know, I, I'm not one of those people that, like, oh, I get up at four in the morning and then I do this and I do that. And I'm like, no, that is not me. But, right. um, yeah, I find I just, I just master it. I, I write a whole bunch of Post-it notes. I don't know if you guys can see scripts. Oh, I love me a Post-it. I'm always, yeah, it's always something. Um, but yeah, I mean, I find, I, I figure it out and get it done. I love it. I love it. I love it. Real boss shit. Yes, indeed. So I love that we got these hearts coming up. Y'all keep the hearts going. Keep the Latrisa! comments coming. I love Latresa. I see Latresa. Hey, Latresa. Welcome, She's welcome. Thank you for joining. Latresa Harbor. Oh, Latresa. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, listen, we are just going to jump into this song list and talk about these songs and what they mean to you. So the first one on your list is Adore by Prince. Classic, <laughs> classic, 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 classic. I think we kind of know what this means to you, but we're going to talk about it anyway. Let's listen to just a little bit because we don't want Instagram to cut us off tonight. <laughs> and then we're going to talk about it, all right? Yes. So tell me, how did that song change your life? Okay, so, you know, growing up, my house wasn't like religious or nothing. But I remember my first time hearing Prince was like, I don't know, it was like middle school. We had moved to Briargate for those who are from Missouri City, Texas. And I'm not going to lie, we were always a suburb family. And mm -hmm. so when we moved into Briargate, we were considered, considered amongst our people. And okay. I overheard someone playing the song in their house. Like we were outside in a cul-de-sac cul and they were playing that song. That's kind of how I really like started to really love Prince music. And mm -hmm. I was like, what song is that? Who is that? Blah, blah, blah. And they were like, oh, that's Prince. And, and, and I was like, can you please play that song over like again? And they played it. And then I was like, can you play it again? And it was something about what it did to me emotionally. Like it just made me cry. Of course, at the time, I didn't know what the heck he was saying and what he was talking about. I, was so little. <laughs> I hope not. 
<laughs> but the story behind that song was when I started working with Prince, this is the only Prince story I'm going to give, is that okay. when we started rehearsing for the tour of Tamar featuring Prince, he wasn't mm -hmm. singing any of his old songs. And he knew through the grapevine, my favorite song by him was Adore. The very mm -hmm. first time he sung that song, he surprised my entire family and my folks of Houston on the tour. And wow. out of nowhere, he just started playing it and I just started crying. So that song will always be like a special song in my heart because it's just for me to work with the guy who sang one of my favorite songs since I was a child and do it. Mm -hmm. And he didn't tell me, he didn't set it up. That was it. That took the cake for me. So um, until the end of time, I'll be there for you. Yes. You are my heart and mind. I truly adore you. Thank it up. Yes, indeed. Your beauty, I still see. I wish he could have heard me sing it, but that's like one of my favorite songs. <laughs> you mean you didn't do the thing where you sing the song to the person that sang the song? Nope, never sang <laughs> the song to the person that sang the song. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. And listen, Wait, just Prince to be. just joined, so. Until the end of time, I'll be there for you. Mm -hmm. You are my heart and mine. I truly adore. If God one day should be blind, your beauty I still see. Love is too weak to defy. Just what you mean to me. From the first moment I saw you, woo, that song just takes me in. <laughs> yes, yes. And I see the purple hearts in the comments. Yes, God. My purple family, Kenny and Chris, like, hey, guys. I had to do that for y'all. But yeah. That's one of my favorite songs of all time. We are not worthy. Y'all, yes, and we're really. just getting started. But listen, I sang that at a wedding for a 70th birthday party, 60th, 50th to 60th birthday party. That was my first time performing it, like, all the mm -hmm. way through. And I was like, ooh, mm -hmm. these lyrics, though. My parents were there. I was like. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> 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 no lie. Those lyrics, boy. Woo. <laughs> You had to go to your prayer closet and talk to Prince about it. Like, sir, why did you I write did. these? I did. <laughs> why why did you write these? <laughs> why did you write these? And then when he found out I heard Cream, he was like, please don't listen to that song ever again. Like, he just did not like me knowing and hearing his old side. So. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, we all grow and we all, you know, can change. But the genius stayed the same. So. Yes, always. Yes, we appreciate that. Absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now from one genius to another, Barbara Streisand. Sing us the next song on your list, My Man from Funny Girl. Come on, we're going to jump into this musical theater for a little bit, getting into this Broadway bag. Come on, y'all. My Man is the next song. We're going to listen to it a little bit, and then we'll talk more. All right, y'all? Y'all. Babs. <sighs> Babs. Do y'all understand that Miss Streisand is a boss and a legend in uh? She love. I love Barbara Streisand. I love Funny Girl. It's one of my favorite films. To this day, like, if I just want to, if I can't go to sleep, sometimes I'll just play that film over and over again. I'll fall asleep mm. to it. I found out it was on Delta Airlines Once, recently when I was flying. I was like, I don't care what other movie is out. I'm going to watch Funny Girl. It's like my favorite <laughs> film. And when I first saw the film, um, when she got to that song, just her inflections, her passion, when I heard the behind the scenes of how they filmed it, um, it is one of my go-to songs for auditions. It's really cool because um, as a woman of color, a black woman, to sing that song, you know, out the gate, is the shock of the casting directors is pretty interesting, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But it's like, oh, my man, I love it so. Yeah, I never know. All my yes. life is just despair, but I don't care. When he takes me in his arms, the world is bright. All right, what for difference if I say I'll go away when I know I'll come back on my knees someday? For whatever my man needs, I am his forever. It's one of my favorite songs. What about favorite You're hired. The part's yours. I don't even know what the part is. <laughs> I need but the you part got the part. to be mine, okay? Funny girl. You got the part. 
I thought you were gonna give the lead to a black girl, but we'll we'll take it later. But I right, love... we'll work on that colorblind casting, y'all. <laughs> yeah, colorblind casting. Can I please have that role? Like, I will remake it right now. So yeah. Oh my gosh. So I know that musical theater is definitely part of all of the many things that you've done and continue to do. When did you really first fall in love with musical theater? It's, it's what I started doing. Um, mm -hmm. I wish I could find some pictures. I'm in Houston right now. I wish I could find some pictures of me in The Wizard of Oz and I played Dorothy. And I've just always been a stage girl just for the fun of it. I didn't know I could make it a, a career or a business out of it until like way until like 2004. But yes. um, I've always been a theater girl, even reading um, Sidney Poitier's book years ago. And he was saying, that he was describing theater and I was like, oh my God, he's taking the words out of my mouth. Like it's nothing mm -hmm. like live theater. Um, nothing like it. You can, you can morph into other people. I love changing the wigs and putting on the different wardrobe. It just puts you in a, in a different place. And um, I, I just was introduced to it at such an early age. So it's always gonna be in me as long as God gives me the gift and I have breath, I will always love theater and I will always be in theater, so. Yeah. Yes, yes. We love it. We love it. And so, so many people recognize you from Tyler Perry. And I'm here in the ATL representing right now. So please tell us, what's it like working with the one and only Tyler Perry? I mean, he is a genius. He, I, I mean, what he sees, it goes when I did his grand opening and he was describing to me how he wanted me to be singing floating on a water on a floater. And I was like, huh? Wow. <laughs> and he, um, he, he made it, he put it to life. And just to see his vision every time he says something or if he has an idea of how to do a song, like even when he's teaching me the songs, he can't sing. Mm. But he'll be like, I know hurt. I know pain. And I've learned when you work with geniuses like that, when they, when they choose you to work with them, they see something in you and you see you, you are able to be a good follower. And I love following him. I love being in his presence. It was always joking. It was always laughter. It was always sternness. He was very frank. He is a praying man. You know, how could you not want to be around that? You know, so mm -hmm. he loved his mom, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and so it was great. He's very astute to detail and, and, you know, that stuff carries over into what I do and, you know, it's, it's, he was great. He, he's always been great. So, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, of course, now as, as the boss of your own entertainment company, Siren, uh, Siren Music Group, I want to make sure I got that right. What have you taken from your experiences working with these other great people that you now use in your own business? You know, it's crazy. Um, I've always been a type of person that's very present where I am, regardless of who I'm working with, right? I never treat people like they're less than. I feel like every moment you have, you're gifted a day on this earth, there's something and someone to learn from. And I don't think I really started applying it until like during COVID. Like I really got to a moment where I was like, I'm no longer gonna compromise. My no is no. I'm going to ask all the questions I need to ask. I'm going to be stern in my answers. I'm not going to waver between decisions. Um, I learned all of that, especially from Prince, you know, the negotiating tactics and, and, and thinking, you, you hear thinking outside the box or the sky is the limit and blah, blah, blah. But it's not until you work with people like him and Tyler Perry. And I have to salute Sharon Hayward and the Gail Mitchells and the Karen Lees. And because it, once you get over that hump of where you're really having to be challenged by people that try you, try me, you know, don't try me, try Jesus kind of thing. <laughs> that part. A, you just get to a moment where you're like, I don't make excuses for my nose. I don't make excuses when I say yes. I don't make excuses for let me get back to you, you know, and it's hard because I'm such a, to me, I think I'm a loving person, but loving don't get you where you need to be. You know, it's the matter of factness. It's the, you know, there's some points that I have to be, I have to pull from my mom's characteristics, my dad's characteristics. There's some days I have to be silent. There's sometimes I can't respond to emails. I have to, I've learned from both of them, remove your emotions completely out of it. And I've learned negotiations are always possible. Everything is negotiable. And if it's not on your terms, especially when you're not asking for the sky and the airplane and the moon and the stars, you know, you have to be willing to walk away and it's okay. And so I, I learned a lot from them though, so. Come on business. <laughs> and, and shout out to the wonderful women that you named as well. And your parents, you know, we, we know these big names, but your parents have obviously been an 
big influence upon you as well. Oh, big time. I mean, we, to this day, we, we talk, we'll talk, 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 talk. We, I talk about relationships more with my dad now more than ever, you know, about, you know, dating. And, and I talk to my mom about like, mom, do you know this happened today? And, you know, and, and she, me and her and some other women, we pray every Friday, you know, we, we, we have a strong unit and it's not a perfect unit, but we do have a strong unit. And um, I think it shows in my family. So, yeah. That is so awesome. What a blessing. What a blessing. Thank well, look, from one great woman, your mother, to another, Whitney Houston is next on your list. I love the Lord. We're going to take it to church for just a little bit, y'all. And then we're going to talk about it, all right? That time again. <laughs> yes, you know, make a little segue. Can't give y'all too much of that. You might get taken oh, away. Wait a minute. Love. Wait a minute. Jeez. Nippy, come on, y'all. What else is there to say? What else is there to say? When this woman came out with that film and that soundtrack, I, I probably played that thing till it couldn't play anymore. I mm. just, what that said to me in that moment was I could be a black woman who sings, can be used by God. I can go into spaces that, you know, I, I could never imagine and pro proclaim his power. And when mm. I heard that girl sing, I love. God, the Lord, he heard my cry, mm -hmm. ah, mm -hmm. and pity every grown long as I have He's thrown. When I really listen to those words. Y'all. Y'all. And all she said was, I love the Lord. He heard my cry. And he heard, it just, it just, it just, it's just, uh, yeah. But she took her time with it. She took her she time. She took her time. She's like, ah, mm -hmm. yeah. How she touch it? She touch it. <laughs> yeah, Whitney Houston. Yes, sir. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! So, a couple of female artists, Barbara Streisand and Whitney Houston. Who are some of your other favorites? We've got one more coming up, so we won't talk hey, about Billy. her just yet. Thank you, Billy. Um, hey, Ayana. Hey, guys. Hey, hey Tim, Pam. Um, another singer that I'm really into today. Well, first of all, hands down, Brandy Norwood. Okay, come you on. Can, you can give me Brandy any day. Come on, be right. rocker. It's the anointed vocals for me. Listen, it's the, it's the arrangements for me. It's the arrangements for me. But you know who else I am really digging? I am really digging my girl Amber from Moonchild, USC alone. Ooh, Shout talk out. about it. Yes, I'm going to talk about home. it. And then I am a huge, listen, I'm going to give a special shout out to my Houston female singers, Kaya, Liv, Vaughn, um, Miriam Echo. Nice. I'm going to give them some shouts because these girls be slaying up in yes. Houston, Texas, Kim Burrell, Yolanda Adams. I'm going to always get Beyonce, Kelly, LaToya. Representing. Oh, LaToya tomorrow, by the way. Um, yes, yeah. LaToya. I'm going to see LaToya, by the way. Hey, LaToya. Please hey, tell her I said, hey, she don't know who I is, but hey, girl. Um, but I am on an India Sean kick. Woo. Give me India Woo. Sean. Yeah, give me, give me I've, some I've India loved Sean. her for so long. I'm so happy that she's having this great moment right now. Yeah, Shout India out to Sean. India Sean. India Sean, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, everything. A whole vibe. A whole vibe. I love it. I love it. So listen, we had one Whitney song. Let's do another one. Just, just for the heck of it. Run to you is song number four, if you're keeping track. Yes, from the Bodyguard soundtrack. Y'all know that was a whole moment. Thank if you, you weren't Tracy. there, you missed it. <laughs> but listen, we're going to listen to a little bit of it, and then we're going to talk more, okay? Oh, I can't give y'all too much. Can't give y'all too much. We're not going to get you. Let you get taken away. You like that one too, Peyton? Me too. That's one of those songs, like, uh, there's another one from Whitney that I think people sleep on is, there's a miracle in sir. How could Ooh. I throw away a miracle? Mm -hmm. How could I let it? But yeah, I, I Run To You is that song that I just like, one day whenever I'm with that that man, that man man, I'm going to be like, I know. The man man. <laughs> I know that when you look at me, 
There's so much that you just don't see, but if you would only take the time, I know in my heart you'll find, oh, a girl who's scared sometimes, who isn't always strong, can't you see the hurt in me, I feel so all alone, I want to run to you, I want to run to you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Tell me, will you stay? Or will you mm -hmm, run away? Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite songs. Sing it. Sing it. Come on, inflections. You better not miss a note. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh, my, my God. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So it, it's it's the vocals. It's the lyricism. I know you're a writer as well. How important are, are lyrics and, and melody in the songwriting process to you? If it doesn't speak to me, I'm not doing it. You know, there's some mm -hmm. songs to this day, like, I just won't sing them. Some songs, you know, I just, and I'm going to give you all a fun fact. Are you saving this live stream? Yes. You, okay. So there's a fun fact that I all, I all want you to know. I've been waiting to say this for a long time. So on The Voice, before I got knocked off, I had a choice to do um, One Plus One by Beyonce or Rise Up. And mm -hmm. I just felt like where I was at that time, the song that I really wanted to sing was Rise Up. And I didn't do um, If I Had a Time. Da, 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 yeah. One Plus One. One Plus okay. One, yeah. So, yeah, I, I just um, I just have to have songs that just like, you know, that, that speak to me first. And then I feel like, they'll exude what God wants in that moment. And I'm just that serious about things that I sing. I'm not going to sing about songs that I don't feel, you know, if I'm in love, I'm probably going to sing more love songs. If I'm, you know, heartbroken or if I'm, you know, jazz was that way at the time. You know, one of my favorite jazz songs is In My Solitude, You Haunt Me. But, you know, I don't have those moments. So I'm not going to sing that all the time, right? So it just depends on where I am. So lyrics to me are very important. Um, even now, like my phone has tons of ideas and I'll just be riding in a car and I'll just be thinking of something subconsciously and I'll be listening back like, when the heck did I write that? You know, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but I, the words come to me like, like very easy and yeah, but I, I don't, I don't profess myself to be one of the best lyricists though. Um, I think some of you guys' favorite songs happen to be like a moment in time. And that's mm -hmm. why they came out that way. Okay. But I, okay. I don't profess to be a lyricist at all. Yeah. But but you do it. But you do it anyway. So <laughs> look at that. <laughs> we love it. We love it. So it, it sounds like a theme on this show with all of my guests has been authenticity. So it sounds like that's important to you, too, to really connect with whatever you're singing and make sure that it's authentic to you at that time. Is that correct? Yeah, it definitely has to be at that time, because there are some songs like um, I just I won't sing right now, but at one song, songs that never stop in my heart are, are gospel hymns, you know, like, um, it is so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take mm. him, or, you know, um, to God be the glory, like those songs just kind of, I love, you know, um, yeah, I, but songs are to me sometimes seasonal, they really are, but these five songs, they're my go-tos, like if I had to do audition, evergreen. if someone is like, can you sing something on the spot, you know, like I got my five arsenals that I, I got. A gospel, nice. R&B, Broadway, blah, 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 blah. That's it. That's it. It's the variety for me. And last but not least, a jazz standard. Someone to watch over me is song number five. We're going to listen to a little bit of Sarah Vaughn's rendition because I love her and she's amazing. And, uh, so, yes, y'all. Someone to watch over me. Here we go. That Sarah yeah, Vaughn sings Gershwin is the name of that album. Just just get into her, please. Just get into her, please. She, she, was, that, she was that singer that could do it all, you know, opera, jazz, blah, blah, blah. Her tone, everything was just bar none, just butter. When I was introduced to her in high school in the jazz department at HSPVA High School for the Performing and Visual Arts, celebrates 50 years this year. Um, <laughs> I love it, yeah, representing. I, I mean, representing. You know, when I first heard that song, I was just like, there's a saying, oh, says that. I feel like it just tells a story. Um, and it really tells, like, about the power of, like, when you're in that solid, secure relationship, you know, it's just, she just sums it up like someone to watch over me and then she what one of my favorite lines is when she says although he may not be the man some girls think of as handsome mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. To my heart, he carries the key. He carries the key. Won't somebody please? You know, I love that line because it's like, it was at that time I was married too. So I really, when I would perform it as Sarah Vaughn at the Crossroads Theater in New Jersey, shout out to them. I really embraced that song because I was like, I don't care what nobody else say. I love him. You know what I mean? That's how I, right. I approached that song. And so it was an honor to uh, to sing those songs. So yeah. <laughs> awesome. Again, you connected to it because it was authentic to you in that moment. Yeah. That is awesome. That is awesome. Well, listen, these five songs have been incredible. You are incredible. Thank I you. I appreciate, appreciate you so much for joining me tonight. Before I let you go, please tell the people where they can find you and what you've got coming up next. Hey, y'all. Okay, you can find me at ashleytamar.com. Um, I am mentoring with Jam Card. It's so much fun. It's a lot of work. The book is out. The workbook is out. I'm working on a crazy huge collaboration. I wish I could give y'all a hint, but I can't. Ooh. Oh. It is a crazy, crazy, crazy collaboration with three people. I'm okay. so excited about this collaboration. Um, I am performing with Stuart Copeland Orchestra. We're going to Portland and Nashville, some places East Coast, um, some international dates. And then um, I'm constantly auditioning. It's a lot of work, you know, finding that out, figuring all that out. Um, I have a huge project. I wish I could just divulge what it is, but I can't. Secrets. secrets. So many secrets. But yeah, you know, I'm just Ashley. You know, they say Jenny from the block. You know, I'm Ashley from the H. Just, you know, hey. praying to encourage and inspire others. So I hope everyone keeps going and, you know, don't give up. Like, whatever you do, don't give up. Don't stop calling people. Don't stop praying. Don't stop believing. Don't stop asking. Don't stop seeking. Don't stop researching. Don't stop reading. Because it really, really, really does pay off. And try to find that time to balance your life and take time out for yourself, you know? And, and it's okay to rest. That's something else I'm Ooh, learning, so. Take a nap, y'all. Take a nap. Oh, now. lay down. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna lay down, my bird. <laughs> <laughs> hey yes god okay so that actually is a segue to my last question mm -hmm. i saw somebody say when are you gonna do a gospel album would you do a gospel album let's just say i start recording on monday <laughs> hey come on whoever yeah, asked that in the comments you manifested that come on yeah i'm working on it starting monday actually <laughs> <laughs> we love it. We love it. So that that's one little tidbit we got here. A gospel. And that wasn't even coming. a part of the uh, exciting announcements, but because they asked, I said it. Right. We got more exciting announcements <laughs> to come. So y'all make sure y'all follow Ms. Ashley Tamar on all the social platforms and stay tuned for all the secret things to come out. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Please share Absolutely. this video with me when you get it so I can, I can post it. I would love to post it. I certainly will. It'll be here on IGTV and YouTube in a few days as well. So I'll send that link to you also. Okay. Thank you so much for being my special guest. Y'all have a great night. Join me next Thursday for another edition of Five Songs That Changed My Life. Have a good night, y'all. Bye. Bye.